and a lot of people you could tell that they're like they're not letting the auto tune vibe with them they're they're singing out bad melodies and then they're throwing on auto tune as a afterthought oh yeah totally You touched on something you said, this is a very practical tip. You said when you got the future vocals, um, they record with one track, so they hear the auto-tune in their headphones, but they don't, it doesn't print like that to the DAW, meaning Correct. They're, they're printing it dry. And you were talking about how it could be problematic on your end, right? But talk about like the benefit, because a lot of people just, still do this auto-tune thing wrong and and when i say a lot of people i'm talking about um we do fan love friday thing every friday where i critique music on my youtube channel and people sending music and a lot of people you could tell that they're like they're not letting the auto-tune vibe with them they're they're singing out bad melodies and then they're throwing on auto-tune as a afterthought oh yeah totally but i feel like atlanta see i don't know if it was an atlanta thing or pop music where it started but you guys changed in that the rappers record with a full vocal chain it's a little flanger on there auto tune um talk about like how, why that's important to, to the to the writer's creative process yeah so songwriters are super notorious for that um like caking on all kinds of effects processing while they're recording mm-hmm. which i'm not a fan of mm-hmm. um I 100% believe in using at least auto tune okay. um, when you're going to utilize auto tune. Because why would you? Not, why, why are you not a fan of like having a little reverb, a little delay, uh, maybe a little EQ, so that it sounds kind of finished in their headphones? Why do Why do you not like that idea? Um, e, so reverbs and delays and compression and not so much EQing unless it's dynamic, like multiband compression. Uh-huh. Um, but those three things mask problems ah okay so when you're tracking um the more reverb and delay and and compression and so on and so forth that you're Uh adding to the recording Uh the more as an engineer you're not you're not hearing what's actually happening Mm. and neither is the artist so if there's a um if there's a breathing issue, if there's a proximity effect, mm. which is a huge thing. Yeah. Um, so if I'm talking this way and then I lean all the way back over yeah. here, yeah. you know, the the microphone is recording all of that. Mm. Um, so it helps to mask those kind of issues and now the recording's done and you're nobody's gonna turn all that signal chain off to go back and listen and mm-hmm. make sure you have something that works. That's good. You know, so. that's that's you know what that's a really good point because because they're probably just slapping on the preset that the artist likes instead of saying hey like let's get the mic placement correct let's get the you know what I'm saying yeah um, huge can, 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 we, can you can you go back to explaining why the auto tune is important in the writing process yeah absolutely so um, auto tune is auto tune is not like um, like an EQ. Right, okay. so auto tune is going to move along with the vocal. Okay. Right, so when you try to apply auto tune afterwards, you don't know what the behavior is going to be. That's key. It's right? a ma- that's a that's a major key right there. Yeah. So you want to listen to auto tune while you're recording, so that you can um, push and pull against auto tune mm-hmm. to create um, the kind of effect that you want to create. So mm-hmm. there are lines that you're going to record that you want uh, auto tune to do less, and mm-hmm. then there are lines you want to record to create emphasis or right. to be, to abstract the vocal in some kind of way. Right. Um, right. So when you're when you're using auto tune in those kind of situations, like if you're listening to it while you're doing it, then the artist can push and pull yep. and and move against and with auto tune to create a more dynamic and, and powerful performance on the mm-hmm. recording. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you don't, if you try to apply it afterwards, you just don't know what you're gonna get. So then you wind up having to like alter the tones and frequencies, not all the frequencies so much, but the, the pitches rather of the vocals um, to push and pull against auto-tune mm-hmm. or to automate it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like we'll turn up the the pitch, I mean the uh, yeah the the returns retu- mm-hmm. retune speed. We'll yeah. turn up the retune speed yep. or whatever during those particular parts to mm-hmm. try to create the end result, mm-hmm. which takes way longer in post production and gets you a um, less quality result than just doing it 
by leaving auto tune on while you're tracking. Yeah, and I I would even say even if you don't want auto tune on the final vocal, it's still probably a good idea so that you know when you're sharp or flat in your recording takes. You right. know, uh, if you're just like an R and B singer. Um, yeah, that's 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 that, that's a good point. Um, well, you know, there's two applications though, because like mm-hmm. auto tune could be used for. Um, for pitch correction mm-hmm. or auto-tune could be used for the auto-tune effect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do people still use auto-tune for pitch correction or wouldn't, wouldn't, or wouldn't they oh, go yeah. in and manually correct it like in um, Melodyne Melodyne or something yeah. like that? Yeah, people do. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's it's a it's a very simple to quick, fast quick solution. Fix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. um, and songwriters which to, you know, to your point earlier so songwriters are completely um a songwriting session is about energy. Right. It's not about technicalities. Right. right. And so it's the same way as producing a, a beat. Like you don't want to get wrapped up in the technicalities of producing a record while you're producing a record. Mm-hmm. You don't want to get wrapped up in the technicalities of recording when you're songwriting. Right. So during those kind of sessions, it people will cake on all of the different processes because yeah. chances are the the songwriters that's not going to be the final recording anyway it's usually at that point being sold to somebody else or being presented as an idea um to get shopped or whatever yep. you know what i'm saying yep. um so auto-tune same way like with a songwriter they're just gonna crank it you know what i'm saying just to get like the the most um the most exaggerated version of it you know mm-hmm. and it, it works out yeah so you talked about this is good because this is this is i'm literally in real time discovering this within the last the last week okay um when you're songwriting you don't want to worry about the technicality of recording or engineering so my process on indy jones 3 was that i produced all of it i recorded all of it and I mixed all of it. The tough part was that I was jumping between these different modes in real time. And I'm really happy with the way it came out, but this last week um, we went by my man Iman's studio in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And Iman was just like, yo. What up bro, good people. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Iman. Um, Really dope engineer, probably one of the best mixers in San Diego. Um, Also DJ Rec is a a really good mixer in San Diego. Um, So Iman was like, yo, y'all come through. So Ray Rock, who's one of my really good friends we went by the studio and it was the first time in four years that i did not engineer myself and i went and it was because i don't have a booth in my studio i just have a chaotic eyeball right so i went into a like an actual booth you know what i'm saying with an engineer and then ray was there kind of helping me coach coach me through the rap and i don't write anything down which is why i feel so insecure even having an engineer because as i'm punching every bar and running it back and punch, there's a there's a cadence i have in the way i'm writing and so anyway so so he was so we we hung out we talked for an hour and then and then i was like yo like let's just let's just track something you know what i mean and so i was able to go in turn the lights off and like lay down a really good 16 bar verse in like 25 minutes Mm -hmm. none of it was premeditated i didn't have anything written down and we got a really good take we added dubs and i thought to myself how liberating it felt to not worry about all the technical side on the recording all the technical side on the mixing and just be in the moment present i'm just doing one thing right now and i was like it really made me like rethink the process of like man maybe I don't have to do everything on every song, right? You know what I'm saying, and uh, and it was it was cool. And then I thought more specific. That's what I thought more specifically about how I do encourage a lot of rappers and producers to learn like the basics of engineering. Um, but I'm learning that there is a time and a place to outsource. There isn't a time and a place that, and and, and people also don't have my capacity. They don't have 15, 20 years of right experience which is the primary thing right right, right which right. is the primary thing and so that's been a journey for me just literally within this this happened monday you know what i mean so what's right. what today saturday this happened monday and i'm like like man maybe i need to you know what I'm saying go to some studios and try some different engineers and try some different things and so um um in in that i think there's a time and a place to outsource what are some tips that you would give independent rappers who maybe don't have the budget you know to outsource and they're like yeah that's good and all but like i don't really have the money to spend two three four five hundred on a mix you know what i mean do you have some basic like rudimentary like here are some ideas of what you can do to make your song sound better yeah um i feel like the um well for one thing 
what you were talking about, like doing the production, then doing the recording, and then the mixing, mm -hmm. um, it's super counterproductive to. It's super counterproductive to to do all of those things without living in the individual roles, mm -hmm. right? So this is one of the first things I can probably suggest is um, when you are producing, make a conscious decision to be in your producer energy mm. and ride that wave out and let it be what it is. It's good. When you get to the to the rap version the rap, rap side of it or the singing side of it or mm -hmm. whatever your discipline is mm -hmm. when you get to that side of it mm -hmm. don't be in the engineering side or in the production side because that's what we tend to do we tend to tinker with the eq and this and that yeah yeah you don't want to get into that um because it starts to you're asking yourself to be um almost schizophrenic or bipolar mm. right and that's not it's not healthy for the music Mm -hmm. um, so even with mixing, when I when I get to to mixing, we have a a core mixing stage. Is myself and my staff. Mm -hmm. We do core mixing, which is um, you know like compression, uh, saturation, EQing, um, limiting, uh, deep breathing. Mm -hmm. Uh, DSing, mm -hmm. kind of like all the nasty utility stuff, the, yeah, like, the non-fun right. stuff. The pitch correction probably is in that process. If someone, I typically don't do you don't pitch do correction. Pitch correction? Okay. Um, I typically make that the responsibility of the person who come who tracks it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, because it's it really should be done in to me inside of the session, not inside of the mix. Um, okay. And I I do do it, but it's very expensive for me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so. But yeah, so we do all of these core things, um, which are very technical, mm -hmm. um, and that allows us to focus and move efficiently through it because we don't attach our emotions to that. That's good. Right? But then we you know, have a drink, and we do the creative side of a mix, mm -hmm. and we have an actual creative session where we just throw a paint at the wall and mm. have fun as mixers. Mm. You know, and that, uh, knowing that we're going to have the creative session mm -hmm. causes us to have um, to focus in when it's time to do the technical stuff okay. without letting our, our attention drift into the creative side, hmm. right? And that makes the, the process way more efficient and way more fun. And when we get to throwing paint on the wall in the creative session, we don't have to worry about the technical issues because that's not what that session is for. That's good. Right? So it's the same exact thing on the side of your uh, recording artist. But as, as far as, um, to answer your question about yeah. recording as an artist and like how to... Um, how to manage getting the best recordings you possibly can. I would say the, the best thing to start with is really becoming good at choosing instrumentals. Okay. Um, so if you're not doing the production yourself, really pay attention to the, the records that you like the most, okay. that are the most universal, um, listen to the production, and then see where the production you're choosing or that you have access to stands up against it. So if you're online buying tight beats or any of that kind of stuff, there still are high quality ones yeah. and low quality ones. That's a fact. So there's a major difference yeah. between the end result. If you start with a solid instrumental, then when you track the vocal, the problems that are happening inside of your vocal are going to be much more apparent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the instrumental is not um, destroying your ability to hear your voice. Right. So that's a that's a big thing. That's good. <clears throat> Pay, so that would you say gain staging kind of falls in that too? Like when you drop that instrumental into your session, probably should pull that down six yeah. seven decibels before you start recording to it we typically drop the instrumental about 15 db oh snap so even more than that 15 yeah. db when before you even go to track a single vocal yeah because i want the vocalist to have the ability to get louder or or you know like if emotionally if they feel like they want to get louder and mm -hmm. the the higher you push this is the way to look at it the higher you push the volume the output volume of the music um the louder the artist needs to needs to compensate um, when there's an emotional aspect of what they're um, what they're recording, got you right. So the same way, if you're recording multiple layers of vocals, mm -hmm. um, like harmonies and things like that, yep. as an engineer, you want to start turning down the harmonies as you're recording, mm. because the more they stack up, the harder it is for the artist that's recording. To, they're going to just get louder and louder and louder right. progressively because right. what they're hearing is louder. Right. Um, so they need to hear themselves. So. Um, in order to create a, a higher ceiling, we'll turn the instrumental down, turn the um, turn the microphone down, and then turn the headphone output up, 
so that you know there's a that's a great tip right there just what you just described turn the instrumental down 15 db turn the mic down so don't record with your mic almost hitting red right right uh leave a lot of headroom leave some headroom and then you said then crank your headphones up right so there's that and then um Pay attention. When are you to- going to do a course on this stuff, man? I'm working on it now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I am actually doing a, a class. If you're in Atlanta, I'm doing a class called Sound Essentials, um, which I've been doing once a month. And it's a it's a private class that we, you know, each session is no more than 10 people. Okay. Um, and yeah, so we go over the, instead of going over like very specific techniques, we talk about theory a lot, which okay. I would consider that theory. Yeah. Um, more so than technique. Okay. Okay, that's dope. So, uh, is there anything else you would give in terms of just like artists starting out? They, they're trying to get a decent. So, you talked about um, getting an instrumental turned down, picking good instrumentals first and foremost, right. getting the instrumental turned down, turning your vocals down, turning your headphones up. Um, what, what else? Holy, 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 I'm from Atlanta, you throw me the ball and I scoot in the zone They hit me up for a deal like it's something I do on the phone Just cause it's me in the studio, don't mean I do it alone Holy yo, 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 holy